This card is where the Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon begins in the world of Yu-Gi-Oh. Let's talk about it. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be a product spotlight and an in-depth look at Starter Box Blue Eyes as well as the Starter Box which was released in 1999 Japan. Now before we get to this card itself, I do want to address the product in which it came from. This right here is what's called the Yu-Gi-Oh! OCG or Official Card Game Starter Box. This product was released twice in Japan. The first being alongside the film which premiered March 6, 1999 and this is why this one is dubbed the theatrical version. And then there's the regular version which was not as exclusive. The only difference between the two on the outside is the sticker right here. The cool thing about it though is that the sticker is on the inside so you can't really fake it or you know attach it on top or anything like that. The second release of this product is a lot more available compared to the first. And that's because the first one was actually limited to 5,000 copies. This was the only way to get the Blue Eyes White Dragon during that two week period between March 6th and March 18th. So because of this, there's not a lot of these products out on the market still. I would estimate there's around maybe 100, maximum 200 copies of this left in sealed condition. And I would say that there's actually even less that are in mint condition like this one is. Now that we've discussed the outside, let's take a look on the inside and what is actually contained inside of this product. So Starter Box is what's considered a Series 1 product. This means that the cards on the inside do not have the Eye of Horus on the bottom right and pretty much everything that was released in 1999 doesn't have it. One other cool fact about the non-theatrical release of this product right here is that the people who pre-ordered the regular release or the nationwide release received a promotional super rare Celtic Guardian. This is the first release of Celtic Guardian and it does not have the Eye of Horus on the bottom right as well. When we take a look at the back, it shows all of the contents on the inside. So the first thing is this kind of duelist file. It's just a small five ring binder it has like a duelist score sheet. And then they actually include star chips inside that you can put inside of this black page right here. That's so cool. It actually has a slot for the calculator as well, which is located right here. This is pretty much the exact same as the duelist calculator that you'll find in the TCG. It just has different paint job on it. And then they have a small guidebook. It's extremely tiny. It's like <laughs> a lot smaller than the one that comes in the TCG. And then another thing that they have is a duelist mat. And last but not least, they have a deck box with an actual deck inside. The deck box is decorated with the Eye of Horus and it has a clip on the back. So you actually look like Yugi when you have your deck holstered on the side of your belt. Now the cards inside of the deck box is the only way to differentiate between the theatrical release and the nationwide release. On the inside, the deck box is pretty much the exact same. However, there are five different cards that are exclusive to the theatrical version that were never released in the nationwide version. These five cards are Aquamador, Trial of Nightmare, The Thirteenth Grave, Dark King of the Abyss, and Turtle Tiger. These five cards were all exclusive to this box. So this means because this has 5,000 copies circulated, those cards also are limited to 5,000 copies. One thing that I think is super important to understand is the five cards I just mentioned are not add-ons to the 50 card roster. What I mean by this is these cards are actually a part of the theatrical release roster, which were replaced by Genin, Kage Ninjen, Rock Ogre Grotto number no. two, Spike Snail, and King Fog. So the theatrical release has five exclusive cards to it, and then the nationwide release has five exclusive cards to it as well. So those are the differences between the two versions of the starter box. In terms of holographics, they're both the exact same. They both have two ultra rares, blue eyes, white dragon, 
as well as Flame Swordsman. They both have three super rares, Mountain, Polymerization, and Raigeki. And then they each have five rares, Forest, Sogen, Yumi, Wasteland, and Yami. All other commons are pretty much identical. So that's the starter box. Let's move on to the Blue Eyes White Dragon and why I think it's actually extremely special. So this Blue Eyes right now, you might be thinking, okay, well, it was released in the theatrical release as well as the nationwide release, so it shouldn't be that rare. For the most part, I agree with you. What's really unique about this though is that the way it was packaged inside of the deck box that it comes in it just allowed for so much damage to happen series one had probably the most brittle cardstock out of anything that was ever released in japan the thing about series one cards is that the back doesn't really get as damaged as the front does the front is notorious for always getting these like silvering around the edges and because it was loose inside of the deck box, it almost is guaranteed to have silvering around the edges. And that's why a lot of these actually get eights and nines. Another issue that plagues this card specifically is the centering. It is atrocious. Like it is probably worse than Injection Fairy Lily from Legacy of Darkness. And I'm not even exaggerating. But all of that talk leads me to the PSA graded copy. This card is pop 15 as of the recording of this video. What I actually want to point out about this is not the actual population of the PSA 10s, but how many were graded. This card was graded 573 times. This is by far one of the highest graded in terms of just overall copies in the Yu-Gi-Oh high end population. LOB Blue Eyes was graded as much as this one. Dark Magician Girl was graded just as much as this one. Blue Eyes has a population of 90 plus. Dark Magician Girl has a population of 70 plus. That shows you just how rare this card is in PSA 10 and just how hard it is to actually acquire in this condition. To me, this card has so many things going for it. First of all, it is the closest to the North American TCG starter deck Kaiba. Another cool thing about this card is that it has the unique series one text box so this was before they shifted to this in order to put in all the crazy effects and all of that <laughs> right like you can't fit anything in this tiny box right here this artwork was reprinted a couple of times later on but as price cards and then it wasn't reprinted until the actual legend of blue eyes ocg release it's pretty much the exact same card it just has the eye of horus and then it has lb-01 on the right this is one of the more beautiful copies of the card. I mean, other than Jump Festa, I really can't imagine anything topping this in terms of aesthetic. This is definitely the king of all mass-produced blue eyes. I would say that this is not as rare as LOB, but I think in PSA Town, it's much, much, much rarer than anything that the TCG has to offer. So that's my presentation on the Starter Box Blue Eyes, as well as the Starter Box deck itself. If you're interested in learning more about the rarest products in the Yu-Gi-Oh world, click the video on the right. And if you want to follow me on my binder journey, you can check out the video on the left. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you learned something. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.